analog input. When you use digital read pin block, you get either one or zero depending on the voltage level at the pin being reading. If the voltage is higher than a certain point, then the digital read pin block will return one or else. The digital read pin block will return zero. Because we are not dealing with digital all the time, some devices gave the output as an analog, such as the voltage divider, analog output sensors. It means the microbit will read a varying voltage at the pin. The analog pin voltage range is between 0 and 3.3 .3 volts. Be careful with the maximum of the input. The maximum should be 3.3 .3 volts. Given more than 3.3 .3 volts will damage the microbit. If you subject the pin as analog input by the analog read pin block, the block will return a value between 0 and 1023. So there's the analog read pin. Not all pins can read an analog. Only the pins labeled analog in can use as an analog input as the picture shows such as P10, P2, P1, P0, P3. One of the useful blocks that I always use in pair with the analog read pin is the map block. We tell the map block the input range numbers, the output range number, and given the value that we want to convert. Here's the code block that shows the actual input voltage on the P0 pin using the map block. With this code block, now I can check how much voltage of a battery. Let's test it out. First, we need to see if the micro bit works. So we're going to grab a show icon. Hard, it doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to clear the screen so that way I know that it works. So here I'm going to grab a button. In this case, I'm just going to go A. Just like in the slideshow that I showed you, we are going to need a show number and map. So we're going to set map to analog read pin. We can do any pin that actually works. Um, we're going to keep these here from low 0, from high 1023, to low 0, to high, as I said in the slideshow, 3.3 .3 for volts. Time to test it out um, to see if it's pretty accurate. So here I have my micro bit attached to my computer. The stuff that you'll need are some batteries. We're going to need a multimeter and we're going to need two wires. It, it can be just about any color but I prefer red and black because they're because red usually means positive and black usually means negative. So assemble the first part with the micro bit. Grab this black and attach it to ground and red to pin zero. So we're going to try out first EBL. Attach the red onto this bump here. Put the black on the flat side. Press button A. 1.18. So it's pretty close to 1.2 volts. Now grab your uh, multimeter. This V stands for volts. Take it over to 20. We're going to use the same EBL battery. It says 1.2. Put red on the bump. Put black on the flat side. And it should say Okay, it says 1.16, which is also pretty close to 1.2, and this is 1.8. For the next one, we're going to try Sunbeam. 
takes a couple of tries, but press button A, 1.56. Okay. Next, with this exact one, we're going to grab the multimeter, keep it how it is. It says 1.54. So again, they're all pretty similar. And finally, this Panasonic CR2032, and it says three volts. So here we're going to take the red one on top. This one's a bit different, so if you have something like this, do it like this. Press button A, two, point nine five okay and for the multimeter exact same way put the red on the top black on the bottom uh, 2.95 just like the micro bit let me introduce you to a variable resistor a variable resistor is a resistor that can change the resistance. There are several types of variable resistors, as the picture is shown. There's one that you can change with screwdriver, such as this and and um, this one. There's knobs, like this one. There are some sliders. That's the one that we're going to be using. So the resistance between pin 1 and pin 2 has a fixed value but the value across pin 1 and pin 3 or pin 2 and pin 3 is adjustable we connect pin 1 to 3.3 volts pin 2 to the ground and pin 3 to pin 0 of a micro bit when we adjust the resistor we'll get the voltage on pin 3 between 0 and 3.3 volts and the read analog pin block will have the full range between 0 and 1023 so here are going to be the different types of patterns that I'm going to be using so this first one so bit 0 will be 1 so the decimal is going to be 1. Then bit 1 is going to turn on, which is the second LED. So decimal 2 is going to be next. Then the next one is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So for my previous video, I made chasing LEDs, which is this one. We're going to add more patterns and control them with the slider. So here's my other three. For this next one, we're going to be doing both corners and it's going to come toward each other. And this final one is just like a combination of number two and number three together. Now we're going to take a look at the code. So here on the on start, I have four different types of arrays so I called them style 1, style 2, style 3, and style 4. So all these have a different number in them to make different patterns. Such as this one's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Style 2 is 1, 3, 7, 15. So it's going to light up all the LEDs. Style 3 is a bit different. They start from both the edges, coming in, and then bouncing back. Um, for style 4, 129 is going to go just like number 3 and number 2 combined. So here, in the forever loop, we will have another variable called pattern. So grab a analog read pin P0 from pins. Okay. And put that in the map. Right here. Put it up here. And put all that into floor. So then we're going to call play 
with this pattern. Function play will have a um, number called num. So pattern basically just becomes num for function play. Over here we have a if, else if, else if, else. Because I have four um, styles. Over here if num is equal to zero, inside this loop, it comes with this index. Oh, for index from zero to, you can do the number of how many you have in a style. However, if you add more, it's going to like, you have to change it on the four too. We're gonna use the length of array so that way it's like better to use. Over here, we have a temporary block because we need to use SPI write style one get value at index block. Then we have another function called loadout. So in the last video, we showed you how the clocks work. So here I have a function that will do the clock for us. We have called loadout four times. That way we don't have to duplicate this the exact same code over and over. Just like in the last video, digital write pin P16 to one. Wait one microsecond, digital write pin P16 back to zero. Then pause as many seconds as you would like. And, and you can copy paste that. If num equals one, it's going to do style two. Num equals two, it's going to do style three, etc. So now I'm going to show you all four patterns. Okay, so here I've plugged in my micro bit to my computer. So here I have a special slider. Right now it's currently on pattern one, if you check the code out. So pattern one is going to be like this. And then if I move far enough, I'll get to two. This time all of them light one by one. Next is number three, it bounces, just like I said. And number four is the last one. It lights up all and then deletes the backside. So this is the end of our analog read pin project. That's all for this video, bye. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so that way you won't miss out on any more videos like this. Bye.